Tomato or tomato? Fruit or vegetable? We don't know either, but what we do know is how to use drip irrigation to grow healthy, thriving tomato plants. Tomatoes are a warm weather plant that need a reasonable amount of water. Like many other plants, especially when they're young, it's best to water them in a method that drips directly into the soil and doesn't spray onto the plant. Getting the trunk wet can promote disease or fungus. I'm gonna show you several ways to automatically and easily grow tomato plants. No more hand watering, no more overhead watering. You can drip water directly into the soil and you can put it on a timer and have it done automatically so that you have healthy tomatoes all summer long. Let's take a look at a few examples of drip emitters that are used to grow tomatoes. We're gonna to replace all three of those. We have a solution that we think will just be a bit more efficient and ideal. Here is the six inch adjustable dripper on a stake. And this is the one that I think makes a pretty decent option inside because you can push the stake down into the soil. And then this is the one that comes out in an umbrella pattern. So you can angle it so it's not hitting leaves or the stalk of the plant. These put out visible water, which is something people really like. But you gotta remember with drip irrigation, it's about efficiency. A button dripper or quarter inch drip line, you only see a small drip and even the wet spot on top of the surface will be small, which makes people think that the plant isn't getting enough water. Beneath the soil, water spreads out. In common loamy garden soil, it can spread out about 12 inches from the point of drip. So it doesn't have that visual appeal, but it's hyper efficient. The next one I'm gonna pull out is a CFD down spray. These are pretty popular in nurseries and growing plants in containers and pots. This one comes on a long stake, so it can be pushed down to varying points in the soil. This one, however, is not an umbrella pattern. It's more of a cone. It puts out an actual spray. Since it sprays down, it can be used to avoid the foliage of the plant. But this one in particular, the blue version, puts out quite a lot of water. If you ran the system too long, it would deliver more water than what's needed. If the tomatoes are on their very own zone and with short watering cycles, this one could be a good one, but I don't think it's quite efficient enough. I would rather use drip line or a button dripple or even the adjustable dripper on the stake. These work great with really thirsty container plants or when you need very short watering cycles. The last one I'm gonna show you is a spray jet. And this is the one I would wanna replace. Even if I did nothing else in this bed today, I would wanna replace this one. This one also comes on a long stake, so lengths could be adjusted, but probably not enough to make this an efficient option for a growing or mature tomato plant. But it is a good option for a propagation bed where you just need to maintain soil moisture. As you can see, this puts out quite a lot of water over quite a distance, making it definitely less than ideal. Look at all the wet foliage we're getting here, wet fruit, wet trunk. This is almost as least ideal as you can get in a situation like this. Even when they're mature and more resistant to disease, it's still best to deliver water directly to the roots, and not on the leaves. We've learned that the best placement for the adjustable dripper, that's the one with the umbrella pattern, is underneath the plant and underneath the foliage so that the foliage can remain dry. Similar with the CFD down spray, although remember that one's the one that's gonna take some short watering cycles if you use it. I'd probably recommend using one of the lower flow nozzles that's available for it. And it can be an effective solution. Definitely do not recommend using the adjustable spray jet. It will promote rot disease due to all the wet foliage. And you'll lose a lot of water to wind drift and evaporation, but they can be a good choice for a propagation bed. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna redo this bed with some other options. It's gonna be button drippers and drip line, the kind that drip little drips, about half a gallon per hour each, directly into the soil. That'll guarantee that all the leaves, trunks, stalk, stems, fruit, all remain dry. The first alternative solution is the button dripper. The quarter inch tubing that feeds the button dripper will be resting on this stabilizer stake. That keeps it lifted up out of the soil, so which helps prevent clogging. Put the button dripper into the end of your quarter inch tubing. You wanna use the barbed end here so that it's nice and secure and watertight. Push the tubing on over the dripper's barb. There we go. Now, put your tubing in your stabilizer stake like that, and then you can then put this into the stake into the dirt near the roots of the plant, and it will drip right to the roots. For a tomato plant of this size, I'd probably use more than one button dripper. You can use a quarter inch T to create a branch in your quarter inch tubing. You can have two button drippers off one length of quarter inch tubing, which is probably what I'd recommend for this, somewhere between two and four arranged strategically in the bed so that you can get the whole root zone of the plant. When the plant is really young, add them as it matures, just to make sure that the root zone is always covered, but not too much. Now let's install the one quarter inch drip line. We'll not only install it, I'll cover some of the advantages that drip line has. Quarter inch drip line has inline emitters at evenly spaced intervals. In this line, it's one emitter every 12 inches. 
Each of these emitters puts out about half a gallon per hour of water. This length has nine inline drippers inside. So we're gonna get about 4.5 gallons per hour of water out of this, much less than the options you saw previously, but with the same kind of coverage as you can see, this could get the entire root system. So first, I'm going to put my one quarter inch coupling into the end of my blank tubing. The reason I'm using blank tubing here is that it has no inline emitters. I don't want water dripping on the wood. We're over here against the edge of the bed where there's no plant. Now we can connect our drip line. Before I do that, I'm gonna cap off the end of my drip line first. Once it's in the bed, it might be a little more difficult to work with. So I just wanna get my cap, which is a goof plug. I wanna get this into the end of the drip line so it's closed off and can pressurize. Now I'm gonna connect to my drip line. Installing drip line is pretty easy because all the emitters are already in. You don't have to go out trying to push button drippers in, get them arranged in the stakes. It's much easier to do in a bed that's empty, but I just want to get it near the root system over here to get the drippers kind of surrounding it. That way water gets to all sides of the plant's root zone. Since it ends up being more than I need, I can cut it and just move the goof plug to the new end. It's really easy to work with. So, what are the best emitters to use for watering tomatoes? Unless you're looking for something specific to propagation or container tomatoes, I can immediately rule out the down spray and the adjustable spray jet on threads. That leaves us with a choice between drip line, button drippers, and adjustable dripper on a stake. Out of those three, here's how I'd narrow things down. Drip line, best value, lowest labor time to install. Also great if you have evenly spaced tomatoes in a bed. Button dripper, it's gonna be your most precise, delivers water directly to the roots and you can place it exactly where you want it. The adjustable drip on stake. Best aesthetic. People love the way they look and they love seeing the water delivered. Ultimately, the goal of drip irrigation is to be efficient, water wise, and to grow a lush, healthy garden. That's why I highly recommend button drippers and drip line to most vegetable gardeners. If you'd like to learn how to build a system like this yourself for growing tomatoes or any other fruit and vegetable, check out our raised bed video. We walk you through it step by step from start to finish. 